This is The Guardian from this morning, uh, 14. Julian Assange is at the eye of the storm over the WikiLeaks documents. But the person who made it all possible is a 23-year-old Army private named Bradley Manning. In an incriminating text message last May, Manning claimed credit for possibly the largest data spillage in American history. To this day, I don't really know what motivated him to send that first fateful email. Adrian Lamo, a.k.a. the homeless hacker, because he moves from unfurnished apartment to unfurnished apartment, is a cult figure on the Internet, a computer genius who suffers from Asperger's syndrome, which affects his speech. Manning reached out to him electronically from Iraq, where he was a low-level intelligence analyst. If you had unprecedented access to classified networks 14 hours a day, seven days a week for eight-plus months, what would you do? At first, Lamo didn't take him seriously, but then... It was when he started telling me, hey, do you remember that collateral murder video? That was totally me. Come on, fire. That video, taken from the gun camera of an Apache helicopter gunship shooting up the streets of Baghdad, had caused a sensation when Assange got hold of it and posted it on his WikiLeaks website. I'm a high-profile source, and I've developed a relationship with Assange, Manning boasted. And, he told Lamo, there was more where that came from. A lot more. The point at which PFC Manning disclosed to me that he had leaked um, several hundred thousand diplomatic cables was a point at which I began to believe that there was a certain de degree of gravity to the situation. From his post southeast of Baghdad, this lowly private could read secret cables from American embassies around the world. Probably this one person managed to pry loose more granular detail of individually classified documents than anybody else. Tom Blanton, who runs the National Security Archive of Declassified Government Documents, says all Manning did was surf a classified network the way the rest of us surf the Internet. I think probably what he did was something more like a Google search, where he entered some key words, some key terms. And by entering those search terms, he came up with cables from all over the place. Out came a quarter million documents, most of them having nothing to do with Manning's job. There's so many, it's impossible for any one human to read all quarter million, he wrote Lamo. The, the sense of importance, the sense of almost power, I, I think, was addicting to him. So why was an army private able to read State Department cables? In a nutshell, the reforms sparked by the intelligence failures of 9-11. And clearly, the, the finding that uh, the lack of sharing of information had prevented people from quote-unquote connecting the dots, led to much wider sharing of information, so that no one at the front was denied, in one of the theaters, Afghanistan or Iraq, was denied uh, any information that uh, might possibly be helpful to them. But as Defense Secretary Gates acknowledged, the government went overboard in its sharing. Manning had access to cables no one in Iraq or Afghanistan had any conceivable need to see. Cables from the U.S. Embassy in Seoul about North Korea and China. Cables from Moscow about Vladimir Putin. Now, obviously, that aperture went too wide. There's no reason for uh, a young officer at a forward operating uh, post to get cables having to do with the START negotiations. But being able to roam at will through State Department cables is only half the story. Manning was then able to download them onto a CD and send them off to WikiLeaks. I would come in with music on a CD labeled with something like Lady Gaga, he wrote to Lamo, erase the music, then write a compressed file containing the diplomatic documents. Then he apparently took the CD with him when he went home to Boston on leave and passed it to WikiLeaks. It's my understanding that investigators believe that the transfer of the bulk of the documents took place the old-fashioned way via what 
nerds like me like to call sneaker net, i.e. walking it on over to its destination. No one suspected a thing, Manning crowed, until Lamo turned the text messages over to the Army, an act for which he has been both praised and reviled. I believed that his actions were endangering lives and that he was going to continue to carry out a course of conduct, specifically exfiltrating documents that had the potential to endanger lives. Manning is now in custody while investigators prepare charges that could send him to prison for life. But Lamo believes the real culprit is Assange. I know for a fact that Manning received uh, assistance, technical assistance, in covering his activities and in um, exfiltrating the data. The Justice Department is now investigating whether Assange can be charged with espionage, while Manning is undergoing a mental evaluation. As he put it in one of his text messages, God knows what happens now.